I think say Peter will be gentle. Hey, hey, he need not be gentle, ma. When I come see, say he don't give water, water to many of our top pastors. When he give prophecy concerning this election, when many they see what he they don't see, when some they see what he fear not let them talk. Oh yeah, now make we regard it because even if I they ask question, he said short a life for see say hey, away. This man not be the way with the reason. Oh yeah, now regard it like that, guys. Make we watch obedient family guys in their last election 67 percent participants over 600 million which if we look at our 24 million as 25 times our size yet in fractions we're less than five percent in our own opposite is the case however my appeal to nigerians is to remain to my billion family to nigerians is to remain calm main pair for our country Nigeria. We have no other country except this one. And we will go through all legal, peaceful means to bring a new Nigeria where everybody will be happy and proud to say, I'm a Nigerian. All right, I'm, I'm glad you talk about to remain prayerful and to remain calm. And the reason I say this is that some prominent Nigerians, church leaders, traditional rulers, and high net worth stakeholders are saying that though there are several infractions, the outcome of the election is the way God wants it, and it should be allowed. So on one hand, you are saying, remain prayerful and calm, but we'll still go to court. Others are saying, for the peace of Nigeria, remain prayerful, calm, and accept this as God's will. What do you have to say to that? Well, you know, I'm very responsible to prominent Nigerians, especially church leaders, traditional rulers, and all that, and other men, very respectful to them. And I think they should be respected for what they represent in our society, but I disagree with them. What they're actually preaching is the problem of Nigeria. The problem of Nigeria is accepting wrongdoing, accepting what is unacceptable. That is using God's name in vain. That's not what God said. God said, do not use my name in vain. So what they're saying is not God's wish. It is not God's plan for Nigeria. So why don't we accept that the 133 million Nigerians who are poor is God's wish? Why don't we accept that 95 million Nigerians living in absolute poverty is God's wish? It is God's wish that you don't have electricity. It is God's wish that our children are kidnapped. It is God's wish that we have collapsed primary health care, leading us to be the country with the highest infant mortality. It is everything that happening is God's way. That's not what God says. No. God's wish is when you do the right thing. And in the end, it is not. This election was predicated and planned and we have clear laws about the conduct of the election if it was followed if it was if this result were uploaded from the boots pulling units like they said to the server and everything we won't be here we won't be talking about it it would have been concluded in a matter of hours without anybody arguing about it but it is not god's wish that you do the wrong thing it is not god's wish that you go and rob a train and make money and start sharing it with it is not god's this is what is killing the country people come here take public money and then go and give it to people in the church and they say it's god's wish and start giving them title in the church title in this that is what we are fighting that's what we want to stop we want God's wish to be truly God's wish. And that is when we do the right things and God gives his blessing. What we are doing now is why they come. What do you tell the young ones growing up? That is God's wish that you steal? That is God's wish that you conduct a wrong, wrong election? It's going to, so tell me the difference between those of us who are doing this and the armed robbers. What is the difference between us and the trained robbers? Let's be sincere with ourselves. That's why it's God's wish that somebody came to your station and said he knows a governor who has 22 billion naira. 
starts and nobody's asking about him. But we are stopping young people who are carrying computer and questioning them and calling them names. That's not God's wish. God wishes us something better. What I want is God to allow us to do the right things so we can start building a better country for our children. All right, so th there are several, you know, messaging and news going on around that INEC is not allowing your legal team to inspect the materials used, you know, for the election. What's going to be your next action as regards this? Well, you know, INEC um, is a public institution sustained by taxpayers' money, including you and me. And I believe there's law about public institutions. You know, if there's anything, they should be open because they conducted the election. Is that that everywhere? If you do something and you people are not satisfied, it's easy to open up yourself. Open yourself. This is not the first time I'm going to court with INEC. And since 2003, I've actually, I will say, several times, I've had to challenge INEC result. Remember that I'm the first governor in this country to come through the process of court. I've been in court for three years. Throughout the three years, I was in court with INEC giving me access to whatever materials they used. So, not the election. You've conducted the election, Rufai. You've announced or declared the winner. I'm only asking, can I have access to the documents and materials you used to arrive at that? I'm not asking you to change what you said. I remember, like I used to say people, I'm not challenging their declaration. Sorry, I'm not challenging who they declared. I'm not challenging whatever the outcome. I'm challenging the process which they arrived at their declaration. And unless we do that, unless we do that, we're not going to stop the rascality we witness in that election. The process through which people come into office is for me, I said it everywhere, is far more fundamental than what they do thereafter. There's a process of doing things. There's a process of arriving at any destination. If, like I said in my press conference, if you're going to answer His Excellency, the process of coming to that bishop must be excellent. If you're going to be a bishop, there's a process of being a bishop. Dr. Ruben is a doctor. Why didn't you call me a doctor? Don't that look like a doctor? You called him a doctor because he went and read PhD. Rufai might be awarded a doctor by university. So he's a doctor. But you can't just go on the street and say you're a doctor when you're not. So there's a must be a process because even if it's going to be awarded, you must have done something that merited you to be awarded there. Or you must have, like Ruben, went and read PhD. Otherwise, we're all doctors. So a process is important. Right. So what would you be doing next, really, if they're not well, granting we'll you access to this? We'll, we'll follow the law. We'll go back to the court and say, what you granted, these people are not obeying. We're not going to be, for me, we're not going to, we'll do whatever is necessary within the law. Whatever we're going to do will be for the interest of the country. But they will give us access because they pronounce and declare somebody. So they, we must have access to the process they arrived at that. This February 25. There have been reactions uh, to your participation, to your role, to what you represent. Governor Yusun Wiki of River State says you are the hero of the entire process. And what is his explanation? His explanation is that you stopped PDP from winning in the traditional places. That for doing that, as far as I is as he is concerned, and for making Southern presidency possible, you are his hero. Uh, Festus Keyamu, spokesperson of the APC, also waded into the matter and said, in fact, that you have served your purpose 
in this uh, electoral process that the purpose that you were to serve was to help make Ashwa Jubala Ahmed Tinubu president elect. That's his own reading of it. He says, because without you stopping the PDP in their traditional states, uh, Bola Tinubu will not have emerged as president elect. Number three, uh, Reno Amokri, who is a spokesperson for the People's Democratic Party, says, well, APC may have read but that uh, Mr. Peter Obi was the perfect rigger in that election. And that you rigged in the Southeast. That he is surprised that a candidate will be reporting 97% of the votes from certain states of the Federation. Of course, uh, Atuku Abubakar, presidential candidate of the PDP himself, had admitted that your leaving the PDP hurt his chances in that election. What do you say to these general comments on your presidential race? Well, uh, Uber, my first reaction generally is that uh, I was I contested the election. I wasn't contesting it to help anybody to win. And I continue to say that even the declared winner did not win. You might have been declared by whatever means, but if no one, the election. Ruben, to win is to win the people. Democracy is government of the people, by the people, for the people. That means if you must win, you must win the people. But if you don't win the people, you've not won. And I can tell you, the last election, the declared person, no win. However, that is what we're challenging. The rascality is what we're challenging. On the various comments, let me use the issue of Reno Mokri. Ordinarily, I won't comment on anything because I only comment on or reply fellow presidential candidates, not their spokesperson because they're not contesting. Or was it something that I have never participated or been part of was mentioned, I need to reply it. Ruben, I have never, and I will never, ask anybody to add one vote, one vote for me that doesn't rightfully belong to me. I've never paid anybody to rig election for me. Go all over Nigeria and ask anybody in INEC, the so-called EOs, President, Commissioner, everybody, whether any of them have met Peter B. saying do this. Go and ask police, army, anybody. Never. They are referees. It is their job to do their job. I've never. This show where I got 97% is in Anambra State. Reno Mokri forgot that in, in 2019, go and check the records, where PDP had the highest vote was in Anambra State. When in 2019, when I was vice presidential candidate to Atiku, our vote in Anambra State was 95 point something, almost 96%. percent That's where PDP got the highest vote because I was on that ballot. And they know me. Ruben, I live in Onicha. If you want to know whether I get 95% in Anambra State, come and go to Anambra State with me. I don't need police. When I come out, you see the reaction of the people. In fact, I'm actually surprised I didn't get 100%. I'm telling you because I don't know who will be voting against me in Anambra State. In the Southeast, it's a similar situation. People know me. People know what I stand for. People know I've kept to my promises. People know I've kept to what I've said. It's a simple thing. It's like people go about and say, oh, he got, um, he, he got votes in Lagos because of the Igbos. Remember how many Igbos live in Lagos? I got more votes from the indigenous in Lagos than those who are, you can call visitors. 
And he was in Nasarawa. And he was in Plateau. And he was in 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 um, Abuja. In rivers where you know that the governor came out against me and everything. I said, if the real vote of rivers were counted, Ruben I won. I have over 50 something percent of the vote. The other two parties were sharing the order. Then it was, I won in Asoro. Because there is a, is him, it was so, will you say it's rigging? Which machinery do I have to rig? I have no councillor, no local government chairman, no this thing. I'm not in control of police. I don't even know any DPO. So which machinery will I use to rig? How will you do? These are, they are the ones who I believe in this. What they are doing is what I'm trying to change. So those who sell it have satisfied what I came from are part of the people we are trying to change. All right. Okay, so, so let's talk about the obedience movement, especially post-presidential mm. election. Now, what some of your candidates in, you know, under the Labour Party umbrella, vying for governorship, you know, of the role of governor, is coming under the umbrella of the obedient movement. And some people have said that, say what you may about the presidential elections, something has changed, something has happened, there's a force. And that was driven largely by the obedient movement. And so the question post presidential elections is, how are you going to leverage that power, that force, so it's channeled to what you want, you know, your beliefs, your ideals, your values, because it's also very easy for such a force to be misdirected. Because there's such, you know, there's such momentum, passion behind that movement. How would you leverage that? Number one, two, um, to channel it towards the governorship elections. We have Lagos GRV. We have Mr. Ken Pella, who came from Delta State, and a few other principals like that in other states. Then beyond that, on a lighter note, you're known for. I mean, you've just reconfigured the term beavers. So being, it's originally called by Model Voter Accreditation System, and you've now called it Best Values Acceptable to Society. Please Basic expand. values. Basic values, sorry. Acceptable. acceptable to society. If you'd like to shed more light on that and enlighten it, it would be great. Well, the, let me start with the Ubilian movement. You know, before we, for us, because Nigerian politics have been largely transactional, when we were starting this, people didn't believe what we were trying to do. The consequence is that we, have, we didn't have candidates for governorship in most of the states. Because being a transitional thing, people would like to be where things are being shared. So nobody believes that a party without councillor, local government chairman, a, a, can come up and become something. So we didn't have, in most places, candidates. In few places, we were able to have candidates, some of which we have mentioned now, who are, I can say, are first class candidates. You just mentioned two of them. And I believe and I support them that they should be supported by the obedient family and the people because they will do good work. You know, if you take Charlie here, young man, excellent background, good education, you can have better than somebody who have a degree in MIT. You know, so this is the quality. In some places, we're going to work with some good candidates because there's some places where we don't have. If you look at my side, east, we only have candidates in two states. You know, we don't have in Ebony and some other places. In the north, we have in Plateau. We don't have in Zafara. You know, so there's places. There's a few of them, and we're going. We're urging people to support, and where we're going to have partnership. Like if you go to it through like Cross River State, you know, where we have someone like Professor Sandy or the senator running under PDP, which is considered an excellent candidate. So we support them. For me, 
it is about having competent credible people who have proven integrity and track record that can do well it's not just about saying oh it must be labor party always no where we think we have good people who support them and i'm supporting them where we think we have somebody better and the same thing is not appreciate people don't say oh because this is with time we will build this institution and ensure that everything we are doing is the right thing but it's not going to be overnight so for me i want people to in states where we have good candidates we're going to support them we're going to make sure it works and where we don't we'll be honest to the people because this what we're trying to do is to build a new politics that will thrive on character, competence, capacity, and compassion, and telling people the truth always. That's why I got 95%, 97% in an because everything I said, I did. Where is impossible, I told the people the truth. Not the Obedience family, una get lawyer. Hey, hey, una don't hear all the video. Una hear waiting it talk. Oh, yeah, now waiting on a reason from this long project. We all see the wait. Yes, so Obi must enter into that power, whether the devil likes it or not. Whether prophecy talk him or prophecy not talk him, he must enter into the sea. So, guys, help us share this video. Hang your opinion. Leave your thoughts by sharing. Thank you all for being here on our Proco Matters. We are at the bring all the latest Oshinana. See you all on my next update and pizza